Welcome to another tutorial. Just real quick, uh, want to let you know, I don't know why I didn't film the part of the assembly, but it's the sticks are from sagebrush and just some rocks, and I threw it in some sculpta mold. When I do that, I will put it on like a sheet styrene, and when it gets to a certain point where it's dry, I pop it off. Uh, I always put it under a fan, but then I pop it off so the uh, so the fan can get the underside, and then I'll just wait till it dries. But that's what I did right off the bat. But anyway, uh, I'd like to welcome you and hope you have a, well, hope this is uh, worth your time. And you know, if you have any questions or comments, let us know. But anyway, let's go. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put, it, just give a base coat to the to the white. Just gonna do a dark brown or burnt bar. And then I'll go and do a wash over the logs and over the rocks. Uh, I don't wanna do a solid color because I want some of the stuff to show through a little bit, but just kind of, especially the logs, I don't want it to be too thick. Just enough to give it a good base coat. I'm gonna kind of thin this down a little bit. So now I'm gonna do a, a watered down uh, golden brown and I'm going to paint the logs and the, the rocks with it. And I water it down because I want it to seep in every into every crevice is one of the reasons I'm watering it down. I know washes will, in the future will do that as well but the initial paint I want to do that too. I made a really thin burnt umbar or dark burnt umbar wash. I'm gonna apply it just over the logs. And I also may have to mix it with the water too, just to dilute it, because I don't want it to cover, do it be, be a really thick coverage. All right, now that I've got the wash down and uh, kind of made them look like they would if they were li alive, I didn't go crazy. I, if they were really alive and I was painting them, I'd, I would do more dry brushing. I'd lighten them up and give more uh, color variation. But because I'm gonna gray them out and treat them like they've been here for a while, I'm not gonna do that. So my first uh, color of gray is going to be a darker gray. This is storm gray. And the reason why I want the brown underneath is I'm kind of treating like nature would. Nature, uh, before a tree grays out, it's alive and it's brown. And so I'm gonna try and treat it the same way. I still want some of the brown undertones below the dry brushing, so that's why I'm doing it this way. I'm not worrying about this, at this point if I have a lot of paint on my brush and uh, I don't really care uh, but I don't want it to be saturated as if, as if I was painting it so I still want to remove paint from my brush so there it has in so it is in essence still dry brushing okay I'm gonna do cabinet gray now it's a lighter gray than the dark gray this one I'm gonna go a little bit light uh, on I'm not gonna have it as heavy uh, because I want to do one more coat after this which will even be lighter but I don't want to really go crazy on this one so it's just gonna be a lighter lighter touch on this now before when I was doing the darker gray, I was trying to push it into the recesses. I'm not gonna push this into the recesses. I wanna just hit this on the top, outermost the edges, and leave the darker gray for the recesses. Okay, this is the final dry brush of the logs. I'm gonna go with a soft gray, it's a really light gray. And I'm gonna be ever so light on this. I'm not gonna have a lot on my brush. And I just kinda of wanna hit the tops area. I don't wanna to top, <laughs> can talk. I wanna just barely hit the top of the area. Man, 
on the top of the logs and I don't want to really drive it into the re recesses. Okay, I'm gonna paint the rocks. I'm gonna use a mixture of five colors. The first one is a terracotta. The second is a khaki. This is a, some kind of almost like a raw sienna, but this is a golden brown. And then an iron oxide brown, and then a dark gray. This is storm gray. The main color is gonna be this, almost like a raw sienna, the golden brown. And then I'm gonna kind of mix the other ones in a little bit. I'm gonna give them a wash with Rikon Flush Shade. I normally don't paint rocks like this. I do them a little bit differently, but with the last tutorial for bricks, I decided to kind of do a little bit of mixture to see what it's like. One thing I wish I would have done is just thin down all the paint a little bit more. Not a lot, not like the wash consistency, but just thinner so it wouldn't apply so heavy. I lost some of the texture on the rocks that I would have liked because of how thick the paint was. So in the future, I'd probably do that. All right, I'm gonna do some dry brushing. I'm gonna go with a uh, golden brown. I'm gonna do about four layers of different colors, starting with this one. Okay, now I'm gonna start go with the khaki, and I'm not gonna go as heavy handed as I did with the other one, and I'm probably only gonna kinda of try to hit the tops of the rocks, not go all the way down to the base where it contacts the mud or the dirt or whatever you wanna call it. So I guess I'll be heavier handed on the top, and as I go down, I'll kinda of be lighter, so there's a transition, but Again, then again, if the, the structure of the rock changes a little bit to where I think it'll look, it'll look good going down further, then I'll change. So just kind of be flexible. Now I'm gonna go with one of my favorite dry brushing colors, sandstone. It's pretty universal for me. I like to do it on a lot of things. And I wanna remove as much paint off of my brush as possible. But I'd rather go multiple layers on this than have the first layer be too thick. And it's totally intentional, I wanna go stroke down on this because I want to have the idea that the light's coming down and then on ridges like this I just kind of want to hit a little bit more without going in this recess right here so I don't want to uh, have my dry brush in there too much. Now some areas like this I'm going to do a little bit more but there's a reason why because I, I come back with shades and I like the, the effect of like especially sepia when it goes over sandstone in some in some cases it gives it a different texture, and give, well not texture, but a different look. And so just from experience, like right here, I wanna, I'll want i probably end up doing more sandstone on this part right here, because I wanna mess with some of the sepia on there and put sepia in different colors. And sandstone in the past has worked really well for me doing this. So you'll see sometimes where I kind of exaggerate or go a little bit heavier in some places with sandstone or the lighter colors, because I can go back with a, a shade and affect it more because I always go back with some shades after I do this just to kind of mess with some of the recesses and play around with some of the colors and add a few more colors into the rock and plus I just do it too because I learn as I go and it's just to have it's I like to, it's just having fun painting it's kind of the goal anyway I'm gonna go back with some sepia sepia seraphim sepia sepia I don't know how you pronounce it people pronounce it different ways I pronounce it sepia so I'm just gonna hit some areas that I kind of want a little bit Either change the color a little bit, give it a richer look, or deepen a shadow is all I'm trying to do here. Now, I think something's like looks too dry brushed, like right here. I'll probably add a little bit of that in there. And then, like I said before, adding some sepia on this gives it a different look. I don't want to mute all my dry brushing, but I, I do want to change it up a little bit, especially where it gets closer to the ground. I'm going to go with some crimson. I want to be judicious about this. I don't want a lot on my brush because I don't know how it's going to look initially, but I kind of want to redden some of the, these places up. Not a lot. So I might rub some of it off with my finger. Then I'm going to go back with everyone's favorite, Juicy Violet. The 
And this will be in crevices and creases and more down towards the bottom as well, just to darken everything up. And then we're gonna go cement and thony and camo shade. Okay, for the top right here on the log, I'm gonna use some fine turf. All right, I'm just gonna tap this off now. Before we go any further, I just wanna kinda of make a uh, note on foliage and if people have to think they have to go out and buy a lot. Uh, I've made some of these before and you don't have to go out and buy a lot of foliage or a lot of different things if you don't want to. Uh, you can use just bare minimum or you can just go out and buy a couple bags and some flock or some static grass or some plastic plants and just kind of go to town on them. I've, made, I've just bought a bunch of foliage recently that I want to try out and experiment with. That's one of the reasons I'm doing this piece is to kind of learn those types of things. So you'll see me use stuff in here that you may not want to go out and buy because it's a lot uh, for initial expense, but I've just happened to be doing it for a long time and kind of a pack wrap. So before we go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put static grass on the, the entire bottom of the base and it's just going to glue and, uh, and put it down and then tap it upside down. So we'll go from there. Okay, while we're letting the grass dry, I'm gonna put some uh, Agrax Earth Shade on the moss. This is a metal green textured mat uh, by Creative Accents. Uh, it's hard to see what it looks like, but that's what it looks like. And I would say it's for like a smaller diorama or something, but for the scale and the things I want to use it for, it's just not worth it for me because of how much it costs. So I don't know if I will buy it again, but I just kind of tore some off and I put them in here. Uh, and I'm not, I don't know. If I, was, if I use it, I think I'm gonna tear it down into teeny tiny pieces for like maybe vines on a plant or probably basing, use it for bases. I don't know if I'm gonna use it for uh, things like this, or maybe a static diorama or something, but um, I don't know. This seems like a lot of money for what I got. Uh, I thought it was something different, but anyway, uh, live and learn. That's it. That's that's what that is. Okay, I'm just gonna dab some glue here and there, and I'm gonna put some turf down. Not turf, but uh, clump foliage. Okay, purely by accident, when I was putting all this other stuff on and letting it dry, uh, I was handling this up here and started noticing that if I rub it, it starts to have some different texture. And that's actually kind of what I was after because uh, I had never done that before. So just by rubbing it, bringing the green back out and giving, because I wanted the underneath, the underneath kind of to be darker, uh, but now it's that's kind of what I want and I'll be able to highlight a little bit more and be able to play around with it a little bit more, but accidents happen. But that's kind of what I want. I didn't know this, that was an unexpected thing. So just by rubbing it, it's kind of giving it the texture and the look that I wanted. So that's cool. That wasn't on purpose. So I'm gonna dry brush a little warp stone glow. I'm stippling a little bit of Zemisi Desert, is that what it is? Yeah. Now part of the reason I do all this stuff too is because I'm learning as well. 
I've never done this before. So I want to see what works because I have other projects down the road that I can apply some of this to. That's kind of why I do some of the things I do. I went ahead and uh, just put foliage on pretty much everything around here. Uh, like, for example, like right here, this is a, uh, this green stuff right here is a uh, uh, spring turf, super turf. Uh, it's pretty good. Uh, and then I went around and did a lot of the tufts from, uh, this is from Army Painter, like the flowers. And I went and did some of this mini nature stuff. Uh, I actually like Army Painter better. Yeah, I feel like it has more variety in the colors. There's at least a couple colors in it, where this stuff is pretty much one color. And so, I don't know, I would, I would just probably, I might just buy Army Painter in the future. It seemed to be a lot better color for, colors for me. And I did this as well, just some Army Painter flowers. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go around with some Seraphim Sepia and just hit some plants. Oh, these plants right here that I'm hitting right now are just uh, some plastic plants I got from the hobby store. Just went around and found some. And the reason why I use plastic plants on uh, train pieces like this is these are gonna be handled. So if I was to use real tree branches up on here, they would get destroyed. Uh, so I'm not gonna use real tree branches. And I don't care about priming things or painting things like that. But I'm just gonna go through and add some seraphim sepia to some of the plants to just kind of help tie them all in. I'm gonna go around with some moot green and not have not have very much paint on my brush. Not really a dry brush, but I just kinda of wanna go and lighten some things up a little bit. Just on top. I'm gonna go around with some rye, 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 yellow. I don't know how to pronounce it. Don't care. Well, that's a wrap on another tutorial. I hope you learned something from it and uh, glad you made it this far and glad you joined us tonight. And, um, oh, it's uh, something that might answer some of Steve Hood's questions about painting rocks or why I paint rocks. I kind of went into a little bit more depth on it. Of course, I've kind of covered it here and there throughout several tutorials, but went in a little bit more in depth on this one. This one is primarily about painting rocks and painting the branches. The foliage, I didn't really go into depth because you can do so many different things with the foliage. You can buy all kinds, you can apply different ways. And so I just kind of uh, loosely covered that uh, aspect of this tutorial. But if you have any questions, throw them in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to answer. Uh, and just if you have any you know, questions applying for this, you can go back to the basing tutorial that we have and things like that. But uh, if you like the channel, uh, go ahead and like it. And uh, if you think we do anything that's valuable, uh, subscribe to us and, and share it. Uh, if you're not gonna share it, just if you learn something from it, just teach somebody. Uh, teach somebody what you know, uh, what you learn from this. Uh, we also have uh, an Instagram account if you want to see detailed pictures of the stuff that we do. And we also have uh, Platypus Scotsman Lounge, which is a Facebook group, but there's tons of Facebook groups. We have Platypus Scotsman, and then we have Platypus Scotsman on Reddit. Uh, and we kind of throw, uh, I'll kind of throw some uh, sneak peeks here and there. Uh, I like the tree for that I'm working on right now. Uh, that's kind of a lengthy tutorial because of dry time. But anyway, so uh, that's pretty much it. Hope you have a good night. Glad you joined us. Let's go back to what my mother used to always say, that anyone can do art. 
So have a good night. Ciao. Cool fire. So very nice. You say so, dude. What? Did you say Southern so? Southern Knights. So, dude.